Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5 and 6. Now, it says something to us, and this is the last time we know in history that God spoke for about 350 to 400 years. It's known as the silent years where history cannot record that God was dialoguing with man on the earth. How many of you hear that? That's a long time for God to be silent. Now, God may have been speaking to some that we don't have record of, but as it is in history for uh, for 350 to 400 years, God was silent. Thank God he's not silent today. Can you hear me today? Thank God he's not silent today. And in this is sort of like the last words of God before he goes into his sabbatical and he's quiet. I think the last words of a dying man would be worth listening to. The last words of God uh, that he might not speak again for a season would be worth listening to. Can you hear me? And it says here in Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elisha, the prophet, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Now, let me help you there. The spirit of Elijah is what that's referring to. Elijah himself was not going to be resurrected and come back. But it's talking about the spirit of Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah was really important because Elijah was a father to Elisha. And when the Bible says that Elisha came and he sought Elijah's a mantle, it means he wanted a double portion, it says. What he wanted was he wanted the father's blessing in his life. How do you hear me? That's what Elisha wanted. He wanted the father's blessing in his life. Children grow up, and the number one thing that every psychologist and so on in the world will tell you, children want the approval of the father. Daughters want it. Sons want it. They strive for the approval of the father. They want their father's approval. And fathers, as I've said many, many times, Fathers give identity. Hello? Mothers give comfort. Fathers give identity. They give that identifying uh, understanding of really who you are. Because fathers give you the last name. Luke chapter 1 verse 17 uh, is telling us that John the Baptist was a forerunner before Jesus. He came in the spirit of Elijah. That's what it says. To turn back the hearts of the fathers uh, to the children. How many of you hear that? Now, in that process, you need to hear. Elisha was what Malachi was referring to. Hello? And he was referring to it in a very, very contextual way. That's why Luke 117 is the parallel scripture to that. Because John the Baptist came as a forerunner telling about Jesus coming, who he wasn't even worthy to tie his sandals. And Jesus was the Messiah. He's the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And But God said, I'm going to send the spirit of Elisha, and it's going to be on John the Baptist. How many of you hear that? And there's no doubt that that... Uh, scripture today has its parallel in our day that we believe that God uh, by his spirit is wanting to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children the children to the fathers God is interested in establishing his name in the earth I'm thrilled that I have uh, two sons that have my name And they're in their child rearing or raising up children that will carry my name, their son, and on and on. And my oldest son has yet to have children, but we're still believing they will. And they're young. And so in that process, my name has a continuation. How many of you hear that? That's a good thing. But we're more interested today and should be that his name does not get removed off the earth. Can you hear that? And with the rise of all of this religious mess that's going on and the elimination of Christianity, how many of you know that in those Arab countries right now, uh, there's places in Iraq and places in Afghanistan and other places like that, that Christianity, as it was known in history, has been totally 
totally removed. The absolute witness for Christ in some of these nations has completely been eradicated. Now, there's no doubt that God's plan is at work on the earth because God is a multi-generational God. If you're a note taker, put it down because I want you to keep that word in front of this whole context here. Multi-generational. God is a multi-generational God. I'm going to show you the difference in a minute of about six or seven little highlighted points that will show you a church that's multi-generational and a church that's one generational and what happens. I'm going to show you in just a minute that when you're a one generational church, you are going to die. When you're a multi-generational church, you are going to see the future. Amen. Even my own life story, having the absence of a natural father since I was 17 years old, uh, my dad died suddenly, uh, choked to death on a piece of food and died in my kitchen. And so my dad was removed out of my life. I had a good dad uh, from all the uh, principle of understanding a father. Uh, I had that in my life up to that point. Uh, he, he supported me uh, when I started surfing at 13. Uh, my dad helped me build my first surfboard. I mean, he was part of my life. He taught me how to do construction, how to work on vehicles. He, he uh, took me to work with him over and over and over and taught me how to run backhoes and cranes and bulldozers and all of those things and work with my hands and tools and I went hunting with him. I shot everything you can shoot, learned how to kill things, dress things, learned how to prepare them so we could eat them. We didn't just put them on the wall, we ate them. And, and so in that process, at 17, my dad was pulled out of my life. My mother had already died when I was nine. Now God chose to save me because I'm a godly seed of the woman and not of the seed of the serpent. Now, some of you today better listen to me. I am of the godly seed and not of the seed of the serpent. And I'm going to show you the difference. It's right in scripture. But because I am of the godly seed, I was preserved. Now let's look at this. This whole thing about a godly seed that I threw out at you. I want to make reference to it. I want you to get it today. In Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. Put it on the board, please. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to Lucifer. Mm -hmm. This is at the fall of the garden. And God said, I'm going to put all kinds of, of hatred and hostility between the two of you. And he said, between the seed, your seed and her seed. How many of you know there's a your seed and a her seed? Yeah. How many of you know you want to be of the seed of Abraham, of the seed of the woman? And if you're born again, if you're born again and you know that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you are of the seed of the woman. But if you come to church and you are empty and you don't know that you are born again, you're still of the seed of the serpent. If you're the seed of the woman, you're going to do the works of the woman, of the seed of the woman. But if you're of the seed of Abraham, just because you go to church doesn't mean anything. Just because you're born in a Christian family means nothing. Being born into a Christian home is no guarantee that you will automatically be converted and exercise faith in God. How many of you hear that? David had a son named Absalom and it didn't turn out well. You understand me? Jesus had a ministry of 12 and had one of them who was Judas. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. 
Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and come forth from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. See, that's what happens. People can't hear the word. They don't understand. They don't have any faith. So when they don't have the faith to hear, they don't know what to do. They panic. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you and, and the, the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and he's the father of it. Come on. On Father's Day, we're defining what a generational blessing looks like and how we become and are the seed of the woman. Amen. Revelation 22, 11. 22, 11. Now, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. How many of you know there's a final consummation that the seed of the woman is going to rule in the earth? Amen. Now, if you would see this, and I don't have the time, but Revelation 20, 11 through 15, and Mark 9, 43 through 49 tells you there's an ungodly seed. And I've been already defining that for you, so I'm going to move on. But I want you to understand there is the seed of the woman and there is the seed of the serpent. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah is a great story or warning to the current culture. Listen good. It is a great warning to our current culture and the whole LBGTQ push and total acceptance through the political correct culture of tolerance is in trouble. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, the tr enemy has played a trick on this nation and got us to believe that the politically correct statements are more valuable than the truth of God's Word. Go to Genesis 19, 4 and 5. Genesis 19, 4 and 5. Now, are you still with me today? This whole thing with the homosexual agenda, and I prerequisited said something, we got to love the Muslim, we got to love the homosexual. We got to love the alcoholic, the drunk, everybody in between. Is that right? Yes. So those of you that get your brain twisted around, untwist it for a minute so you can hear the truth. And here it says now, but before they lay down, but before they lay down, the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, all the men from every quarter surrounded the house. This is where Lot is. They're in the city of Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, and they called Lot, they called to Lot and said, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know and be intimate with them. You see that? Now, in this story of Sodom and Gomorrah, we have absolute principle to watch. God is a God that says the seed would be to Abraham as multiple as the sand of the ocean and of the sky. And Abraham is our father. There is a seed that gets carried through and gets passed down. If you don't have the seed, uh, Jesus came uh, by the Holy Spirit to impregnate us with the seed uh, of the Messiah. When we got saved, we now carry the seed of creation's promise. Do you hear me? What God said to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28 that we would be that people who would bring dominion, would multiply the earth, and replenish the earth. You and I today carry that seed. How many of you know you can carry a seed in you for a long time? And we are that seed. We have that seed in us. My grandmother had the seed of Abraham in her. She got saved as a young girl and loved Jesus with all her heart. In that process, she had my father 
eight brothers and two sisters, and he was carrying my gene, my seed. Are you listening? My dad and my mom, when they conceived me, the seed carried through. And I got the seed. Are you listening to me? I got the seed of the woman. So in that, God marked me from my mother's womb. And I've carried that seed to this day. Are you hearing me? If you go back and check it, your lineage, there'll be a seed somewhere that got transferred to you. Stay with me. Come a little further. Any culture that allows homosexuality or even heterosexual promiscuity uh, to dominate its culture ensures that it has no future. This is why this generation is a one-generational thinking. Now, here's the heavy. This is why this militant homosexual lobbying currently influencing group over our media, over our courts, over our politicians are not just looking for equality. They are in a fight for their survival because they can't reproduce themselves They have to ideologically reproduce themselves in our seed. You better listen to me today. They can't have baby gays and they can't have baby uh, lesbians and they can't have baby queers and they can't have baby transvestites. They can't have them. But they ideologically can shape them and create them out of your seed. So the seed of the serpent is after the seed of the woman. Look, I watched this recent event down in uh, Orlando and was horrified as you are. These are young men and, 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 and folks, women, I guess, and young men that that needed Jesus more than any at the moment. Do you understand? And because the seed of the woman is so involved with its own selfishness, instead of the gunman going in that bar, which is the seed of the serpent, the seed of the woman should have gone in that bar And there should have been revival. And we have family in this church that lost cousins in that shooting. So don't don't misunderstand. You're only five people from knowing somebody and somebody to know somebody around the world. But here's the thing that it, get, it gets me when I see this, how subtle and how cunning this, this seed of the serpent is. He was able to seduce people at every level where people became mad at politicians rather than mad at the shooter. I, I can't put it together. When you're mad at my car for running into you. So if I run into you at the stoplight and knock you out into the road and and give you whiplash and you get out and walk over to my 350 truck and start cussing my truck out, I'm going to stay in the truck because something ain't arranged right in your head. I, I'm going to stay in my truck and lock the doors till the police get there because there's something wrong with you. When you start cussing my truck out. When you start cussing the gun out. And you're not mad at the person who had the gun. The serpent has beguiled you. And look, they don't want equality. They are on survival 
Because if they don't have your children to seduce, they don't have nobody. Because they can't make their own child grow up. See, they have to adopt somebody else's child and make that child gay like them because they can't make see I can make a soldier I can ma I made a carpenter he owns his own company he's a builder I made one in my image I made a, 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 an entrepreneur who owns two restaurants and and is a musician because my dad was a, all eight brothers played multiple instruments. My dad's seed was in me and I gave it to my son and my son has the seed of the woman and he has the seed uh, of the artist. Yeah. 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 Remember Genesis 22, 15 through 18. Abraham's covenant promise, I will multiply the seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed, thy seed, the seed of the woman, the seed of Abraham shall possess the gates of his enemies and in the seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed look saints it's in your seed that's going to secure the cities of america it's in your seed that's going to secure the nations of the world if we don't fight for the seed of our own then i'm telling you the serpent is out to seduce them and turn little girls into lesbians yes. and little boys into homosexual activity to be gay men. And God's word was we should be defending the gates. Yes. Our children should be the generation of generations that have been trained up in the house of God. That's why I say some of you parents keep wanting to send your kids off to college as soon as they get out of high school. Send them to the Bible school for a year. Get them so grounded in God's word that when they stand up to the professor that wants to tell them who they are, they'll be able to define back to the professor and say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not one of them. I am a child of, the, of God. I'm of the seed of the woman. And I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We're a multi-generational thinking church, not a single generational church. But we must be a multi-generational church, though, so we need fathers to do their job to guard the seed and train up the child in the way they should go. Can you hear that? Listen to this story. This is an illustration. If you don't think it makes a difference, two names. If you want to write it down, write it down. An atheist named Max Jukes, J-U-K-E-X, Max Jukes, Jukes, okay? Max is a interesting character here, okay? And he lived an ungodly life. He married an ungodly girl from this union. Now, let me give you another guy. You could put him on the side, put him in like a column, one on one side, one on the other. Here's Jonathan Edwards. Y'all ever heard of him? 1735, great revivalist. All right. Well, he was born at the same time of Max Jews. They were both born at the same time. Listen to this. Now, Jonathan Edwards lived the same time as Jukes, but he married a godly girl. So now Jukes marries an ungodly girl, and Edwards marries a godly girl. Now, of his marriage, of Edwards' marriage, he has 1,394 direct ancestors. Here's what happened to those guys. Jukes had 310 who died out of his um, descendants, paupers. Edwards had 100 preachers and missionaries come out of his loins. Jukes had 150 that became known criminals. Edwards had 13 who became college presidents. Jukes had seven of those 310 who were murderers. Edwards had 65 college professors. Jukes had 100 who were drunkards. Jonathan Edwards had three that were United States senators. 
More than half the women that were born under his loins turned out to be prostitutes mm -hmm. under Jukes. Edwards had 30 grow up to be judges. Jukes of his, four, of his 540 descendants cost the state more than one and a quarter million dollars because of the things they'd done, the stealing and all that. More than, than one and a quarter. One and a quarter million dollars back then in 1700s was, was staggering. I'm not finished though with Edwards. Now Jukes is done. He's finished. You got 100 preachers, missionaries, 13 college presidents, 65 college professors, three United States senators, 30 judges, 100 lawyers, 60 physicians, 75 Army and Navy officers, 60 authors of promise, one VIP of the United States, 80 public officials in other capacities, 295 college graduates. Some were governors of states. His descendants cost the state nothing. That's the comparison of two. The seed of the woman was put on the earth to multiply and bless the earth. The seed of the serpent, like Max, were put on the earth to destroy that seed. 